So I'm going to wire this thing up for 240 volt. Um, whoops. <coughs> What you need to do um, with galvanised stud and track when you're using electrical cable, one of the main concerns there is <coughs> sharp edges, sharp edges on the galvanised stud and track and because the bus is a moving object it's going to bounce up and down, vibration and movement and that's just going to work its way like that, day in, day out, year in, year out. And eventually it's going to work through the coaxial of the cable. <clears throat> and it's going to, you can see all the scuff marks on that coaxial already. Just from that little bit of, little bit of movement. And what's it going to, what it will do eventually is it will work through the coaxial. It will hit the live wire and then it will turn all this metal framing into a live circuit. Now in, you know, in a residential environment, if you're doing a house, it's a fixed structure and it doesn't move. Um, what they'll do is they'll just put conduit through any sharp edge and then they'll feed the wire through the conduit like so. And then conduit into the sharp edge so the vibration isn't actually making its way through the wire but in this case what I'm going to do is just uh, be extra cautious and I'm going to slide a bit of conduit through the hole of each stud and then also around the stud with caravans and anything that's mobile you, you need to use double pole light switches and power sockets you need to use double pole <clears throat> but that's just for the terminations the cable you can use the standard three core two and a half mil wiring that you use in houses so it's the same it's all the same stuff conduit through each hole and then feed the cable through the hole and that's going to help the longevity of the electrical and the wiring <coughs> just come around this stud through there I'm going to have a power point up here I think I might put the power points on the shelf um, 
Yeah, so then we can just plug straight into it. Okay, so you get the gist of that. Another thing what I might do as well, was a right pain in the ass. Bunnings or Harbour Freight, they only had two different sizes of conduit. They had this size, which was the first one I purchased. And it turns out to be just a little bit too big. So I went and got this smaller stuff, which is the next size down. It fits through, but there's a bit of slop there. So what I'm going to do to stop that conduit from vibrating out eventually, very unlikely that it will, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and bang some silicon around the conduit at each hole just to lock the conduit there, stop it from moving. Okay, <clears throat> so now I've got the wiring in the wall, I'm only going to have one power socket in the bedroom, I'm just going to have one here for him and one here for her, all the, all the lights in the bus, I'm going to tap into the original lights that are here, all these ones, so I'm not, I'm not wiring for lights. So I don't need any loops, loop backs or anything like that. Just need a direct wire feed to the power points. So I'll have one here for his and her. And then the kids' bunks won't have any power. Oh yeah, best put one in for the kids' bunks as well. There'll be another one there, another one here for the... There'll be pretty much one power point in each room. One in the laundry, one in the bathroom. Maybe two in the kitchen, one in the kids' room, and yeah, so it'll be very basic. And I'll keep I'll keep all the power points down low at around about a 300 mark sort of thing. So because there's no user manual for this stuff, <laughs> it's just coming straight out of the top of my head with the knowledge and skills I have. So how I want to do it is I want to start from the back of the bus. And I want to get the back of the bus done completely. So I want to get the framing for the back, I want to get the framing for the bed, I want to get all the walls lined, the insulation in, the wires run, and terminated, and everything buttoned up in the back of the bus from, from this side of the wall. That way is going to be completed 100% before I keep moving forward. That way, if there is um, if, if, you know, a monkey jumps out of the closet or something pops up, it's not too late to adapt my strategy and my plan and to fix it through the rest of the bus build. Uh, just a couple more things. <clears throat> I did anchor, as well as putting these button heads in, I've anchored the floor tracks down these brackets these big washers and then I've got big big square brackets underneath the bus that they're bolted into so it's going to help fix the floor track down also as a, 
as a precautionary measure because I don't want water if there is ever a leak in the windows at any stage which realistically there may be if there is at any stage later on down the track and you know something leaks the windows or the roof leaks and the water runs down the wall I've gone ahead as a precautionary measure I've just drilled a little drain hole here and then a little drain hole into the side of the track so if the water comes down the wall and builds up on the side of the track it's going to come into the track through this little hole and then drain off into the undercarriage of the bus through here and they're just all little drain holes just in case there was a leak I'd rather give somewhere for the water to go now because the water like electricity is going to follow the path of least resistance and if there's a hole there it's going to build up find its way through the little drain holes I've got and uh, and drain out into the undercarriage I'd rather all the water go into the storage part of the bus than actually build up in the actual living space because that's just going to generate mold and all sorts of other trouble later on down the track I don't want to do that any longer without safety glasses. <clears throat> There's nothing worse. It's just like when you jump in the ocean. I've tried to do scuba diving before. And I got in there, jumped off a jetty into like 10 feet of water. Oh yeah, this is good. Get used to breathing underwater through one of those hooker setups. And then that, that eerie thought of a shark popped into my head and that's when panic set in and uh, I couldn't be in the water anymore after that so uh, as I was grinding away just there I kind of do this squint technique for sparks I don't want to get sparks in my eyes so I squint but then I had that thought a scary thought I'm sitting there grinding away and the thing Thing that popped into my head was the grinding disc shattering and then a shard of the grinding disc going straight through my eyeball yeah <laughs> makes you think twice about uh, safety <clears throat> so I've got safety glasses and earmuffs because that's really noisy as well pain in the ass <sighs> that's better 
so one other thing that needs to be done. And you've got galvanised metal framed walls and also being in a bus as well. The bracket didn't actually quite fit. It was too wide so I just trimmed a little bit off each edge to make it fit. And I want the actual mounting plate on top of the shelf because all this area is going to be covered up by a mattress so I just want easy access. One other thing is you need a boot. I need a little boot in there like so. And that stops the terminations from vibrating when you're moving along down the road. It stops them from earthing out on anything. And I can fix that to the, to the start I've put in there. And Bob's your uncle. Voila, one power socket successfully run. So now what I can do is insulate this part of the wall and get the uh, sheet metal lining on there. So it starts to look pretty, just a little bit prettier. Give me a little bit more motivation to keep going. Because it uh, just takes a while. If you try and do all this without wearing gloves, at some stage you're going to end up with a severe cut that will need that will require stitches. So it's a um, it's highly recommended. Spend that couple of bucks, protect your hands. Because without these things, you couldn't get anything done. You try and wipe your ass without any hands. That's... <laughs>